for yet. We are the Dog Gurus, a business consulting and staff training company that helps pet care businesses launch, grow, and profit. You can find us at thedoggurus.com. I'll put that in the chat in a minute. And Virginia says, hello. Hi, Virginia. And Rachel says, hello. Thank you so much for uh, writing in the chat. We really appreciate it. A couple things I'll mention before we get started is we are having a masterclass on sustainable staffing, August 22nd through the 24th. So if you're experiencing high turnover and would like to know a system of attracting employees that align with your mission and values, that, that will result in engaged employees who have purpose and inspiration to succeed at your job. We can help you. You need the masterclass, so sign up while there's still space, and I'll put the link in the chat. And Cynthia says hello, and Mikey says howdy from Boise. Mikey's always on watching us. We appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> and what was that? She always has a good howdy. So. Yeah. <laughs> And next week on Facebook Live, Coach uh, Carrie, Coach Courtney, and I will be discussing how to stop the feeling of being stuck in the daily grind of your business, where you're missing out on growth opportunities and innovation. We'll be sharing proven strategy, strategies to regain control, accelerate growth, and achieve the success you deserve. So join us next Wednesday, August 9th at 3.30 p.m. Eastern. Awesome. All right. And Karen says Aloha. Aloha. All right. So it sounds like we got people from all over the place. Sometimes we have people from out of the country. I wonder if anybody is listening from I our we'll see somebody from the UK or yeah, or Canada. So yeah. All right. So today we're going to be talking about factors that contribute to employee turnover and how to fix them. So we all know that staffing has been extremely challenging the past couple of years. And I know as business owners, look, we can feel pretty beat up from various different things from, you know, the clients, from the employees, from just the obstacles that we face externally with competition, things like that. It's tough. And I, I've been there, but I know as an entrepreneur that you have the grit and tenacity to figure out the staffing challenge. You wouldn't be an entrepreneur if you already weren't a great problem solver. So I think what we need to do is let's strive to take the emotion out of the situation and start looking at it from an, an executive mindset. So we can't ex control the external hurdles. So let's focus on what's in our control to deal with the staffing issue. Is that yeah. your phone that's making the doing sound? <laughs> I'm getting slacked. Okay. I'm getting so the boing, boing, boing yeah. from the company. <laughs> They don't know that we're on Facebook Live. <laughs> okay. So look, you know, employee turnover creates lots of huge costs in the business that don't have to be there. You know, like productivity, it's productivity is going to take a downturn when you have a lot of employee turnover. The cost of having to replace an uh, employee is a lot and possibly having to pay unemployment claims, things like that. And it's just time that it's going to take to replace employment, hiring, interviewing, all that time, all that stuff, advertising, training. I mean, so this is this is a big issue that we really want to help you on. So let's talk about the first one of the contributing factors that that cause employee turnover. So number one I have in there is a mis mismatch of employees skills and the job. Yep. So one of the things that we'd recommend on how to fix that is to be really specific with your employment ad. Right, Carrie? Right. Absolutely. You really want to paint a clear picture as to what the, what the animals, what, what the employees are going to be doing in the position, but you don't want it to be negative either. So, it, you know, there's a real fine art to crafting the right advertisement for the position, but want to make sure that between the job um, ad and um, the interview process that you're getting a good feel for what their skills are and that they have a clear picture as what the, the expectations are of the position. Yeah. And I would recommend even trying to put in some type of like, like test or screen process where you can test their skills that are necessary for that job. So for example, if I was hiring a front desk employee, well, number one, I'd want to know that you know, what level of, of math skills does she have? Because she's going to be dealing with, you know, invoices and possibly having to fix them. And I'd also want to know the skills on how does she present herself or he presents himself over the phone. 
So I think that there's different things. You can ask them to do a little video um, screening where you can ask them qu certain questions, or you can even ask them to take home like a homework project and they have to fill that out and do a sol problem solving um, test. Absolutely. Yeah, and the next thing I would say is one of the other causes of employment employee turnover is substandard equipment, tools, or facilities. So I'm not saying that we need to build a brand new facility. That's, that's not realistic at all. But you would be surprised at the little upgrades that you can make that you can do that makes an employee happy. Like, for example, my employees, they just love that I would get different colored Sharpies all the time. <laughs> You know, and and, notes and things like that, you know, they wanted colors. And so that made them really happy. But there's other things, you know, that could really help make their job easier. Like our parking lot uh, sh uh, shared half of it was like the, the outdoor play play area and half of it was the parking lot for the guests. And look, by putting up a screen so that dogs wouldn't get riled up every time someone came and left was made the employees so happy. So it's things like that, you, like that, that you can do that really are helpful. Did you have any things that really, uh, anything like that that stuck out in your head with your employees? Well, I just think about what you said last, and that is that they were so happy that the dogs didn't run, get riled up because there was that visual barrier put in place. And I think that ties back to safety, which is another issue that I think has been a theme in some of the articles that you and I were researching, is that employees feel safe. So if you're looking at facility issues, whether it's policies, procedures, or actual facility maintenance that needs to be done, anything that you can do to shore up the, the process while they're working the job on their shift, that's going to make them feel safer. And you have to look at from the big picture that, you know, if an employee feels safe and they are more calm because they're confident going into a play group or to an individual enclosure, if they feel safe, then that's going to project confidence with the dog. The dog is going to feel safer. So it's going to cause a generalization of just more calm amongst the whole facility. And when that happens, then there's less up and down. There's less anxiety. If you just have a really loud play group that's like going, 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 and that leads to like constant stimulation, then that's where you'll find those accidents that can happen because things are just escalating and escalating. But uh, but when you can do those steps and put those safety measures in place, whether through a you know different SOP that you've written or whether it's that you've done some adjustments to the facility, that's just going to give employees that sense of safety and confidence. Absolutely. And just having the right tools, if, you know, mop buckets, wheels are broken, things like that, or maybe the bathing or grooming equipment's a little bit dull, you know, things like that. There's small things that you can do to upgrade the experience for the employee that will help keep them there longer. Hey, Shantae, I just want to add to that really quick, because it makes me think back to presentations we've done where we've talked about how to grow a staff member and see then visualize that they have a, a path, a progression within the, the position that they can start to make a career out of the pet care industry, if that's something that attracts them. And, and little measures that you can start assigning to staff would be that, you know, they either create a channel in Slack or when I work or, you know, whatever the communication tool is that you use with your staff, but they create that communication tool for facility maintenance, or maybe they're the person that's going through once a month and inventorying mop buckets to make sure that the wheels do work, or they're squirting them with WD-40 once a week to make sure that they're staying loose, you know what I mean? But giving somebody that extra job can be seen as responsibility and not just another task they're burden with. And I think a lot of that has to be of how you couch that to the employee, but, you know, saying, you know, you're doing such a great job. I would really love it if you could bring these things to my attention so that we're always in the, the best, you know, physical shape with the facility and we're not doing anything that's unsafe. So it's just, it's just a way I think to kind of keep them more involved and engaged. And that's a perfect segue to the next one that I want to do. But before we do that, uh, Jody from Canada says, hello. So hello, Jody. And Edmund was commenting on the screening process for the employees. He says, we use a tool to answer questions over the phone, record their answers, which helps filter. So very, very useful tips. Thanks, Edmund. That's great. So the next thing would be lack of opportunity and advancement for growth. And I'll just kind of create a stat here. Report from Gallup, 87% of millennials share that opportunities for growth and development 
are one of the most important factors for career satisfaction. And roughly 70% of professionals and other generations echoed this sentiment. So, so that's really important. So one of the things that we like to uh, tell our customers to do is create an org chart because that also shows where there's opportunity for advancement in your company. And then uh, one of our other coaches, Anna, is, has a really great system where she has the levels set up with her facility. And can you explain that to everybody a little bit more, how that works? Absolutely. So uh, let's just give a, a pet care technician, let's just give a basic job title. If somebody comes in with no experience, whether it's their first job or they just have zero experience working with animals, they would start as the kind of level one pet care technician. And, and that's assigned a certain hourly wage. And then they have to, you know, complete Knowing Dogs 101. And they have to have been checked off on certain procedures that are um, related specific to her business. And then once they've done that, then they can move up to kind of that level two in the pet care technician role. So each of the different roles that she has or job descriptions has three different levels in it, all that are assigned a different hourly wage. But it's a structured way that employees can see if I want to make more money, I have to do X, Y, and Z in order to get to the next level. So if someone's really proactive, they can do the training, they can be more involved, they can answer or, or ask and, and get answers to a lot of questions that will help them do that progression and, and get to a higher hourly rate faster than, than somebody who's just kind of doing the bare minimum. And she's got that within each of the different roles that she has in her business. So I hope that's a good enough description, but it's basically just a way for employees to be able to kind of track where they're at and how they can get to the next level. And if you're stuck in the practice of giving your employees raises based on longevity, here's a way to make that switch because really we should be giving raises based on merit and based on the skills that they have and the ability, you know, where they're at with their job and the value that they, they bring, not just because they've been there for a year or a few years. So I know that sometimes it's easy to get into that, that habit, but this is a way that you can switch over and use a really solid plan during that levels. It's, it's a great idea. Other things that you could do, oh, go on, Carrie. Well, I was just going to say one thing. I think that we kind of, our generation, well, I'm a little older than you, but, um, oh, but when we talk about, um, but when we talk about where we were and what our work culture was when we first came into the workforce in our early twenties, you know, we were much more of the generation where there was a really strong work ethic. There was not so much a work-life balance. You worked until the work was done and not that you just worked till, you know, the time was up and then you left. So I think one of the things that we have to recognize is that there has to be a mindset shift in us. And I know going through the pandemic, there's probably some fatigue and exhaustion on the part of us. It's kind of, kind of like saying, you know, what more can I possibly do for you? <laughs> but there is more. And I think a lot of that has to come from how we are presenting things and that we are changing things. That old structure of having one performance review a year and that during that performance evaluation, you're given, you know, some sort of, you know, cost of living raise, or maybe there's a raise that's, you know, tied to getting a little bit more duties assigned, but, but that is very kind of old school business. That's how things were years and years ago. And now I think the fact that we're seeing a trend where people don't get a job and they don't work in the same position for 20 years and then retire or 30 years that, you know, there's a lot more job hopping. And so to make it more attractive, we have to be able to meet the needs of the, the workforce that we have today. So, so there's gotta be a mind shift kind of on both sides. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because it can feel like you're constantly bending over backwards for your employees and it's frustrating when they're not sticking around or they don't recognize it, right? They don't acknowledge it. Right. But, you know, I guess we just have to kind of, like I said, take the emotion out of it, get over it and start looking at it as a solution-oriented mindset. Absolutely. Um, so other things that you can, you can offer for career development and showing them that there is a way to move up in the company is just by, uh, you know, signing them up for workshop workshops or conferences, invite them to go to a conference with you, education programs like Pet Gurus College, PAC and CCPPD. So those are all great things that you can also give perks to your employees to keep them around longer and to show that there is advancement in the career of pet care. Uh, the other thing that uh, I'll mention, number four on my list, 
is uh, feelings of not being appreciated. And this kind of goes into our topic of what we said, um, what we were talking about last week. And you know, like you were saying, we come from a different generation because we are close to age. We're not that much difference, but <laughs> but I knew I was doing a good job if I wasn't getting yelled at. You know, I knew I, was, I didn't get a ton of praise. You know, I just, we weren't, that's not the generation we came from. We, you know, we just had, at least I felt like I had really good high work integrity and ethic. And, you know, I was there to do what I can because I needed that paycheck. But it's not like that anymore, like you were saying. So you need to implement a reward system for your team and hold regular reviews so you can highlight what they've been doing well and where there's opportunities for growth. And last week we talked about a lot of different reward systems. Bark Bucks, Karen says Blue Ribbon Kids. I don't know what that is. What is that, Karen? Blue Ribbon Kids. Maybe, do you know, Carrie? I don't know. But while we wait for her to type in an answer, um, it does make me think of, you know, talking about kind of that mindset shift and that um, people wanting to feel appreciated. I think you can implement programs that are, you know, rewarding for all the employees, but I think cultivating relationships, what does it say? Every kid gets a ribbon. (laughs) Yes, that's very true. (laughs) And you know what? What has happened, and you know, if there's any just employees and not owners or managers watching this, you know, I apologize, it's not meant to insult, but but that that generation of everybody gets a trophy for participating. Um, the skills that they lack are resiliency and the ability, the inability to fail. So um, they don't know that you know failure in life is what gets you back up on your feet. You know, it's how you react when you fall that that makes you a better person and um, and helps your career as it grows. If it has to do with a stumble that you may have in the workplace, but I do think that as owners or leadership teams, that we do have to spend some time cultivating relationships with our employees because in some cases, even if it's a like the bark book program and things that we talked about last week. Sometimes I think if you just learn and understand what's really important to your staff members, and maybe as an owner, this could really be a way that you're rewarding your leadership team is that, uh, you know, if you know that you have a, a manager or a, a assistant manager that, you know, say they're really into dog sports and it's the summer months and they don't get to do things on the weekends because it's it's so busy at the facility, but making sure that there's an agility trial they want to go to and making sure that they have that weekend off that they can go and maybe even pay the entrance fee. I don't know that they're that expensive. I don't compete in dog sports. I have Frenchies, but, <laughs> but I think that, you know, having that relationship where you can identify something that's important that that's very personal to the employee. And I think that's a way that you can really develop and deepen those relationships. So. Yeah, exactly. Great advice. Um, the next thing on my list is absence of camaraderie. So they say roughly two thirds of employees would reject a new job offer if they had work friends at their company. And I think that's probably really important for our workers today to feel a sense of belonging, to feel a sense of family. And to have friends at work, because that will keep them there longer if they feel a part of a a group. So, you know, some of the things that you could do is just plan ongoing team building, building activities. You can have team meals, lunches together. Maybe if everybody's old enough, go to happy hour together, which is fun. But really, you want to just create a fun atmosphere for the employees to bond over. And if you do have an employee that's likely to kind of naturally not gravitate towards their peers, we'll make an extra effort to invite them and ensure that they're going to be included. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, because you know what, in the, in the dog care industry, it's funny because the front desk staff or the front of house staff, they're extroverts, right? They're people, people, but the back end of the staff, the one working with the dogs in the back of the house, they're introverts right. and it's two completely different personalities. So we need to figure out a way to bring them all together and get them social and comfortable. That just made me think of something we used to do at our, our, our annual Christmas party every year. It started, gosh, maybe a decade ago where we had two staff that decided they were going to set up an obstacle course with all of the things that we used as tools. So like poop scoops and mop buckets and we had hula hoops from the hula hoop game. And then each of the classrooms that are our playgrounds where we had a, like a high bar stool. So they literally set up all of these things that we had to do. And then they split 
the, the team into two. And so we had like a mix of our kind of, you know, front of house, back of house, our introverts and extroverts on each team. And they, whoever got through all of the obstacles fastest won. And it was hilarious to watch them. And it was so team building, but, you know, at a Christmas party with a little bit of alcohol. Should I say that? On the <laughs> <way>? <laughs> That's like, like not even more fun. <laughs> <laughs> so Regina just said that yesterday someone went to lunch and never came back. And, you know, I'm sorry, that's, that's a bummer and uh, frustrating. So again, hopefully you can take a real good look at, you know, what can you do to maybe help that or prevent that from happening? If possible, if they'll answer their phone. I would call them and just have a conversation and just ask them real honest that you really want to learn and improve your business. So what were the reasons why to, to find out? I mean, create a learning opportunity from it, even though it stings of how they went about it. Yeah. Totally unprofessional. And, so. You know, sometimes that will happen and you may find that there's a toxic employee that is kind of, you know, undermining your culture and you're not even aware of it because either staff don't want to come forward and mention it, or it's just so under the radar that what they're saying is just not bubbling up to the surface at all, but it's definitely eroding the rest of the group. Yeah. I mean, a, a toxic manager or an employee can really just be a cancer throughout the whole facility. So if that's, if that's something going on, then we, we highly recommend that you try to deal with it as best as possible or, you know, get that employee removed or coach them to change the way that they're doing things. Which brings us to the next thing, actually. Everything's leading into one another. <laughs> okay, so inadequate or lackluster supervision and training, which we are really big on training and working, talking to so many clients, we see a wide variety of lengths of training plans. But what, what I would encourage you to do is really at least make your training plan at least 30 days. And I'm not saying like every day, eight hours of training. What I, what I want to tell people to do is start breaking it down into micro learning sessions and you build upon that. And when you train somebody, especially their first week or two, you want a lot of reviewing, a ton of reviewing. Every day should be reviewing what you were taught the day before, taught them a couple days before. I read a, a statistic in Harvard, Harvard Business Review saying that Employees do not retain 75% of what is taught to them in the first 48 hours. So, it, you know, think about that. It, because, listen, when you're going to the, our, our facilities, there's so many distractions and there's so much stimulus. It's hard to really concentrate when you're new to the industry, your new employee. What, do you th what, what type of training plan did you have for your employees? So ours was, was pretty in-depth. It was at minimum six weeks. So they did a lot of in-person one-on-one training with either a manager or supervisor. And then they went on to a peer mentor who helped them. Uh, but they they were with somebody for several weeks before they ever were in a play group by themselves. And we did a couple different things over time. You know, it was all in the beginning kind of going through our SOPs and, you know, paperwork and and. I think people don't like to read as much as they like shorter videos. So that's where we found that really cool app called Slide Dog. And, and you can throw anything in it. It can be a PDF file, an Excel file. It can be a video. It can be a PowerPoint presentation. But you just throw it all in this app and it creates a playlist. You can sort it in the order that you want. And then you can watch it as a video off of this playlist. And it's either like still like a PDF or it's a video. And, and so my manager would sit with them and we would cover a lot of topics fairly quickly on that first day, but just, it was giving them an overview of what the job was going to look like, because if they had hesitations or questions on that very first day, that was the time to address them. And then we would kind of see, oh, they don't really want this job. This is not what they thought. It was not playing with dogs all day, you know? <laughs> so, so that really helped being able to kind of have that first condensed day. Yeah. I mean, you really need to create a thorough system of onboarding and training. So it's consistent yeah. because without that, I mean, first of all, nobody, you know, employees want structure to be able to know that they're doing jobs, their job correctly, but also the training, the people who are training your employees, it's so much more helpful if they have a guide to work off of. Yeah. 
So Karen was saying the biggest newbie complaint for us, I'm assuming that might be about training. And yeah. Stacy says 90% of back staff is late teens, early 20s. They have opposing beliefs. I want to like everyone I work with, but don't make me socialize outside of work. <laughs> yes, that's true. <laughs> All right. So the next thing, um, I have just a quick suggestion on that. So you may do some things at your facility that like, I know we weren't open on the weekend, so we had the ability to do like a movie night and bring everybody in, but you could do something like that. Even if you have, you know, daycare's done for the day, all of the lodging dogs are taken care of. And then maybe you could in a training room or a, a play area set up a, you know, TV with a, a DVD or streaming service so that you guys could all watch a movie together. Do something. I mean, we ended up doing theme nights. So we had like Western nights and we did like a Harry Potter night and everybody dressed up and one met, somebody made potions. And, you know, so it's just something like that that's they're socializing. So they're getting to know the team better, but it's not outside of work. It's still at work. Yeah. And, and I think along that, like if you're, you have monthly staff meetings, which we recommend monthly staff meetings you can make those fun. It doesn't always have to be boring. I mean, we always had food or sometimes we had potlucks at the staff meetings, but we would, in order to train people, we'd play Jeopardy. So you can actually find Jeopardy online and make your own board. And we'd had teams and they loved that. That was so much fun. Another idea I had was, you know, creating some type of like bingo board to train dog behavior and play styles that, you know, you can make it fun for them to learn and reinforce the things that you would like them to approve upon without like being harsh about it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Karen asks if you were a day camp only, my facility was lodging, daycare and bathing. Mm -hmm. And Carrie's facility was daycare. Yep. And did you do training too? No, we did a Richmond daycare and then we did have a puppy program. Program, but, but no, we actually did more parent training than we did dog training. So we did a lot of educational classes for pet parents, which was just a great way to get them to be better pet owners. So it made our lives yeah. easier. <laughs> yeah. Carrie uh, is from Alaska. So that's where, that's where her facility was. I had my facility in Los Angeles. So we're kind of like two different totally areas. Different. Yeah. <laughs> totally different areas. <laughs> but I'm originally from Seattle. So, you know, which Carrie, Carrie has I'm roots. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We're Washingtonians at heart, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. So the last thing, which is the obvious one that usually is the first thing that people think of when discussing contributing factors for employee turnover is compensation. So that's a tough one, especially if, you know, you're a growing business and you're, you know, still building up your client base and things like that and growing your facility and, and tools and things like that. But there is a lot of ways that you can tackle this. And just one of them is just simply providing perks to the job. Mm -hmm. So that would be like maybe, you know, free use of the services that you provide or PTO or desirable benefits for them. Like, you know, you could get really creative if you can't afford to do health insurance, which that's tough for a lot, of, a lot of businesses. There's health savings accounts that you can set up for your employees. Or the other things that you could do is like maybe you you can help pay for some type of tuition or something like that, set up a program. But I, my best advice for that is figure out what your employees want and then find a way to kind of meet in the middle or a way that you can help them in that manner. I, I have stopped and asked more managers in like retail stores, what do you offer your employees? If I'm getting really good customer service, especially nowadays, and, uh, and, and look at places like Starbucks or Target or, you know, places where you may be going on a regular basis that probably has high turnover, but why do you see those faces over and over again? So uh, I know like Starbucks pays for people's Spotify accounts and they do a tuition program through Arizona State University. So that is a large corporation that makes billions of dollars off of coffee, but there are things that you can do. I mean, you could pay for people's Netflix accounts or something like that. That's just a way to do something that's important that they're using on a regular basis that would be attractive if you were doing the payments for. Exactly. I mean, you can get real creative to make perks. It's not always about their hourly rate wage, but of course, you know, you want to show them a path to success and show them that there's ways to increase that by merit. So 
did I hit them all? Did you have anything else to add? I think that was it. The only other thing when we were talking about that, the Harvard uh, Business Review article that they just had taking the following six measures um, <laughs> on turnover, which was incentivize loyalty, um, provide opportunities to grow. We kind of touched all of that. Um, elevate your purpose. So make sure that you've got your vision, mission, and purpose really in place and that those values are really woven through your culture so that they know that that they are helping you to meet that mission every day. Prioritize your culture and that connection between the team and leadership as well as the team and clientele. And then invest in taking care of your employees and their families. So again, that kind of goes back to cultivating relationships because it used to drive me crazy if I heard not even through my leadership team, but through another employee that, you know, so-and-so's dad was in the hospital or, you know, their family pet had passed away because that is something that was very important. I wanted them to know that, you know, they were all part of our family and we really cared about something like that. So, you know, if they needed a day off or, you know, if we could do something that, you know, like if they lost a, a pet, we would make a donation to a local animal shelter or something in their pet's memory. So just kind of building that, that, that foundation that you care about, not only the employees, but their families. Yeah. yeah. Valued and heard yeah. and known from your yeah. employees is huge. And Michaela says our employees want free daycare and boarding. Problem is all our rooms are being taken by employees because they all have dogs, sometimes multiples. So, you know, we had, I had a similar problem. Like when you're getting into your busy, busy months and your high peak seasons, we had a rule like, okay, you can have free daycare if it's off season or boarding, but if it's a heavy, busy weekend, like a holiday weekend, or it's a weekend during our peak season, I'd give them a deep discount. So at least it's, it's something somewhat of a perk. So that was my solution because I was running into the same problem as you, Michaela, where all of a sudden everybody was, you know, taking all these rooms and I was losing out on revenue. So you can consider doing something like that. I would still, you know, give the discount. That's a good discount, but don't, don't lose your shirt on it. Still at least break even or a little bit more. Or set limits. If it's for daycare, um, you can definitely set limits and say they can get, you know, two days of free daycare a week. If they have two dogs, then they get a day for each of those dogs. Now the dogs may come on the same day or they may come on individual days, but, but that has to be the limit. The other thing I would definitely say is that when you're presenting those options to them as a benefit, that you're not only including, you know, this is what your hourly wage would be times, you know, 2,080 hours if they were full-time, you know, a year, but also this is the value that we're also compensating you by giving you, you know, two days of free daycare a week so that they understand that, that, that has value because it's a cost to you for their pet to be there when you're not bringing in revenue for that pet. Yeah, that absolutely. That is a great way to show them what they're getting. Peg says, look at your parent expertise for trades for employee benefits. We traded daycare for things like hair services, chiropractic, and et cetera by our pet parents. Peg, awesome, awesome piece of advice. That is genius. Of course, Peg and, and Harry work together. So <laughs> that's <laughs> right. Uh, I have to get my hair done now. It's so expensive. <laughs> And then Karen says, we no longer offer free 50%, only after 90 days and boarding had to be pre-approved. So that's smart too. Yeah. yeah. That's a really great strategy. Lisa. And also, and also really defining that as far as that 90 days, because we had employees who were like, but no, I want to bring my dog now. But well, the reason behind that is because you're going to be training. We don't want you to be distracted by your, your dog being there. So, you know, just making sure that all of those things have a really strong definition that you can give to the employees. And Lisa says that is what we do. They can bring their pets as long as we are not full on lodging or holidays. Yep. <laughs> and I see what Peg says. I work for it. <laughs> Karen also says, and it had to be there. It had to be the dog who actually lived with their employee, not the neighbor's dog. Of course. Yeah. I can't even believe they try to slide that one by. That's, you know what? People are creative, aren't they? I bet because, well, I don't want to, I'm not going to make assumptions on the situation, but my mind's going. So I will stop and right now. So, <laughs> all right. Well, this has been a really fun talk and I was so thankful for all the contributions to our conversation. That really makes it fun for us and makes us have a conversation that's meaningful to everybody. So thank you. The last thing I'll say is- 
we can always take it offline. If people have more comments, don't um, hesitate to post in the Grow Your Pet Care Business Facebook group, because I love to see the conversations continue there and people sharing their ideas. Yes. And you know what? I never put the links up for our website. So let me do that now. Hold on. Can you just tell them a little bit about the Grow Your Pet Care while I put these links up? Yeah, that's our free um, Facebook group for uh, pet care business owners to join. And and we only have two rules that, that you be nice and that you don't sell anything. So those are our two rules, but it's a great large community of members and people just ask questions. It's a great place to share a win or just ask if there's something that is either a new service that you're trying to roll out or if, if you just have a question in general. I mean, there's just, there's been so much information shared over the years on that site or that group. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for doing that. So I put up the links to our website. I also put the links up to that masterclass. So if you liked all the ideas that we're talking about, this masterclass is exactly the stuff that we're going to be teaching you and creating, helping you create a system that will attract the employees that you need. And then I put the Facebook for your pet care business. And we made that really affordable um, because we really want to get um, this information out to people. So um, if you just participate live, it's $97 and uh, for the three days. And if you want the all access pass, which gives you access to watch it live or to see the recordings after the fact, it's $297. Is that right? Yeah. 247. 247. 247. Yeah. I mean, which is, look, the value that you're going to receive, 97 bucks, it's a no brainer. Yeah. So if you, if you can't make it, or maybe you're not working in the business, have a manager go, Absolutely. somebody who's in charge of hiring, but the all access pass is there, like Carrie was saying to get the recording so you can watch anytime, but it's, it's, it starts on August 22nd. And usually it's from 11 AM Eastern to about five, 5 30 PM Eastern. And that's Tuesday, Wednesday, so the 22nd, 23rd, and then on the 24th, which is Wednesday, it's a short day. We only do half days. Uh, but if you, get, yeah, Thursday. if you get the all access pass, oh, it's Thursday. Yeah, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. If you get the all access pass, there's actually like little perks, like we're going to do meet and greets and happy hours, and things yeah. like that. So where you get to spend some time with the, the team at the dog gurus and you can just, you know, pick our brains and things like that. So we've done some kind of live coaching before on these master classes, which is really fun. We'll give you time to submit some questions you may have, and then we'll do some live coaching. So it's a, it's a great opportunity for a very low rate. Yeah. So Stacy was saying at some point, it'd be great to have a session or masterclass for owners of franchise facilities. There are some distinct differences. Oh, I think that's a really great idea. Yeah. We'll bring that back to the team. Yeah. and see what we can work up for you. And Jen says, can we have the details of the Slide Dog app? Uh, yeah, it's just Slide Dog. <laughs> if you look online, it, it comes up just if you search in the browser and, and you can use it straight on a, a PC or an Apple, or you can have the app itself on your phone. So it's a great let me, tool. Let me, if I can find it here, I found it. So I'll go ahead and put that in there. Perfect. Yeah comes right up when you google it it is a unique name yeah and it's a cute little dog logo all right team thanks well, for joining well, us great to have you guys thanks for joining us yeah we'll see you guys next week okay take care bye-bye